long-expected party. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. Bilbo was very rich and very peculiar ever since his remarkable disappearance and unexpected return. The riches he had brought back from his travels had now become a local legend and it was popularly believed, whatever the old folk might say, that the hill at Bag End was full of tunnels stuffed with treasure. And if that was not enough for fame, there was also his prolonged vigor to marvel at. Time wore on, but it seemed to have little effect on Mr. Baggins. At 90, he was much the same as at 50. At 99, they began to call him well-preserved, but unchanged would have been nearer the mark. There were some that shook their heads and thought this was too much of a good thing. It seemed unfair that anyone should possess apparently perpetual youth as well as reputedly inexhaustible wealth. It will have to be paid for, they said. It isn't natural, and trouble will come of it. But so far, trouble had not come, and as Mr. Baggins was generous with his money, most people were willing to forgive his, his oddities and his good fortune. He remained on visiting terms with his relatives, except, of course, the Sackville Bagginses, and he had many devoted admirers among the hobbits of poor and unimportant families, but he had no close friends until some of his younger cousins began to grow up. The eldest of these, was, and Bilbo's favorite, was young Frodo Baggins. When Bilbo was 99, he adopted Frodo as his heir and brought him to live at Bag End, and the hopes of the Sackville Bagginses were finally dashed. Bilbo and Frodo happened to have the same birthday, September 22nd. You'd better come and live here, Frodo, my lad, said Bilbo one day, and then we can celebrate our birthday parties comfortably together. At that time, Frodo was still in his tweens, as the hobbits called the irresponsible twenties, between childhood and coming of age at 33. Twelve more years passed. Each year, the Bagginses had given very lively combined birthday parties at Bag End, but now it was understood that something quite exceptional was being planned for that autumn. Bilbo was going to be 111. A hundred and eleven, a rather curious number and a very respectable age for a hobbit, why the old took himself had only reached 130. And Frodo was going to be 33. 33, an important number, the date of his coming of age. <whistles> Tongues began to wag in Hobbiton and Bywater, and rumor of the coming event traveled all over the Shire. The history and character of Mr. Bilbo Baggins became once again the chief topic of conversation, and the older folks suddenly found their reminiscences in welcome demand.